for thee to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, during these weeks of Advent, we've been looking at the Incarnation, God becoming man in Jesus, and specifically the four reasons that the Catechism gives for this happening. And last week we looked at how Jesus became for us a perfect model. And the week before, we talked about how Jesus became man to share, to give us a share in his own. And today, I just want to speak about how Jesus became man to show us the extent of God's love for us, to show us how much God loves us. And we know this um, by one of the most famous, te- uh, most famous texts in the New Testament, which is John 3.16. You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that those who believe in him might not perish but might have eternal life. It's very famous. You know, you see it all over the place. or hear about it everywhere. And it, it testifies to this, that Jesus did all this out of love for us, to show us his love. But I think that, uh, unfortunately, too often we don't really think about this or really appreciate it or wonder about this. I think the statement, God became man, has the same response in us as if I said 2 plus 2 equals 4. It would just be like matter of fact, something that doesn't really register too much with us. So I think we need to recover that childlike wonder at this beautiful mystery that we have, that we believe as, as Catholics. And there, this is so unique in, in all the world. You know, there's something vaguely similar to it in the Greek mythology. They had stories about what they call gods and their acts of service, like one about Hercules, who was the son of Zeus, and how he used to tame horses and clean stables, or about another god named Apollo, who one time um, took care of the, the herd of cattle for a king. But these are just made up stories. And we believe that Jesus Christ, the true Son of God, became man for our sake, was ill-treated and persecuted and crucified and died, and all of that for our sake. It was a great act of love, and it's just so remarkable. If God had asked us, what can I do to prove to you how much I love you, then who of us would have thought of him doing that for our sake? None of us. And so what we could never even think or imagine, God has thought of and has accomplished. And there are simil- similar things in the lives of the saints that we, that we uh, know about. Like St. Alexis, was, we heard one time that he, was, that he uh, had, was from a wealthy family, but he chose on his own accord to live as a servant in his own father's house. Or about the bishop St. Paulinus, who one time became a slave to ransom the son of a poor widow. And these are really remarkable examples of love and humility. And there is a difference between being a son and a servant. There's an even greater difference between being a bishop and a slave. But the difference between God and man, that's infinite. And that's what God has done for us. He has crossed that gulf. He has emptied himself. Jesus has emptied himself to become man for our sake and for our salvation. And he did this for each one of us. And that's a really difficult thing for us to believe that God would have sent his son for my salvation alone, for yours and for mine, that he would have done it for each one of us. And I think this is hard for all of us to believe. And maybe most of us don't believe that because we don't know how anybody could love us that much. And so I think we need to ask God for the grace of understanding truly how much he loves us and allow that to penetrate deeper and deeper into our hearts, especially as we approach Christmas season we see the, the infant Jesus lying in the crib, and no, it was all for me. This is what St. Paul said. He said uh, in Galatians, he said, Jesus Christ loved me and gave his life for me. And all of us can say that. Jesus loves me and gave his life for me. And this is something that should motivate us. Another thing that St. Paul says, it's beautiful in the Latin, caritas Christi urgit nos. It was the motto of my college seminary. The love of Christ pushes us onwards. And so uh, it should drive us. If we know that Jesus loves us, it should drive us to do great things for him. And it should help us be joyful. St. Paul says we should rejoice always. 
Joy doesn't come when everything's perfect in our lives, because we know it never is. Joy comes from knowing that we are perfectly loved, no matter what happens in our life. And so we should really reflect on, on that. And if in our past we have, not, we have thought very little about the love of Jesus and what he's done for our sake, then with the days that remain in our life, let us keep our eyes fixed on him and think about how he became man, how he suffered and died and rose for us. And then we can love him who has loved us so much. That's why he became man, to show us his love and to prove his love for our sake.